welcome back Talking Tottenham every week, no better place to be sat If it's a win, lose, draw, we'll be here for a chat Best believe we tackle topics like Romero with the back Young Min Son, what can go wrong when he's on form? It's a dream come true, so sit back, relax and vibe with us Hello and welcome to another Holly Sox Spurs Live. It feels a little while since we've done one of these, to be fair. Um, we've had games normally on a Monday, so it's quite nice to, well, dissect. I was going to hope it was going to win, but sadly it, it's not. But with me to do so, I am joined by three fabulous guests. To start with, I'm joined by Lee. Lee, it's amazing to have you on the channel again. How are you, my friend? Loving it. Hey, uh, thanks for having me back on. Pro proper appreciate it. Getting into it. It's going to be therapy, in it, for, for, for the viewers and the listeners now, because we had therapy before. We just sat in agreement. Don't need therapy. And now therapy's back. You couldn't make it up. Did we see Ange ball the weekend? I think we saw Stellini ball, but I'm sure we're going to get into it. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I said uh, at the start of the season, I feel like therapy session on Monday is sadly gone, um, but now it's bowing its head slightly. Um, but we need it now and again, I guess. Um, it's great to have you on, Lee. I'm also joined by Russ. Russ, it's amazing to have you on the channel. How are you? I'm very good, thank you, Holly. I love your logo. <laughs> very you. clever. That's so cool. <clears throat> I'm good. I mean, obviously, a little bit downcast like we all are about the last couple of games, but... Uh, I'm hopeful that uh, I know we're going to talk about the Villa game, which is our next Premier League game a little bit later. Um, I'm I'm still quite hopeful, uh, but not as hopeful as I'd like to be. There you go. There's a clue. <laughs> I love that. No, I'm sure we'll dive straight into it, Russ. It's amazing to have you on. And we're also joined uh, by Connor. Connor, it's amazing to have you on again, my friends. How are you? Yeah, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me back. I'm um, I'm all right. Bar uh, bar the Spurs recent games, I'm um, I'm all right. But I, I side with Russ. I think there is there is still a lot to be hopeful about. You know these these bumps in the road happen, but I'm sure we'll digest it a little bit more. So yeah. definitely, yeah. I think like we kind of said, I think we've needed maybe a little bump in the road. And I just didn't want this massive one to happen all at once. But Lee, let's kick off with it. Obviously, we needed a bounce back after the Chelsea game. And that sadly didn't happen against Villa. But going into it, how were you kind of feeling, uh, sorry, going against Wolves? Yeah, look, I mean, I, you know, I was at the Chelsea game and uh, I listened to a lot of our, our show last one on Spurs, uh, which Russ was on. Because uh, I was still, I was still at the stadium, and uh, I, you know, it was such a weird ending to that game. And the re only reason why I'm bringing that up is because, like you say, we needed an a momentum shift a little bit. But everyone was applauding the players at the end of that game, and the atmosphere at the end of that game in the stadium was was unbelievable. It was like it was a change, a tide change. I've never seen it before. I've been going to Spurs for years, never seen that before. Um, so I was very hopeful against Wolves. So, you know, I, you know. Jason will be watching this now. He'll be giving it like, you know, tough place to go. But, you know, it is a tough place to go. I think um, O'Neill, Gary O'Neill's gotten playing really, really well. They've already taken points off Newcastle there. They've already beaten uh, Man City there. The champions, of course, the treble winners. Um, and, you know, you, you're going there on an early kickoff. Only what? I mean, can we say four and a half days? By the time that match finished, we played nearly two hours match on Monday and then with the early kickoff on Saturday. So, yeah, I'm finding some excuses in 100 percent. But then, of course, you've 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 snapped you snapped your, your best one of your best defenders hamstrings. You, you, you have a, one of your other best players in the league, let alone in Tottenham, has snapped his ankle and done his ligaments. And you've got them players banned. So you're thinking, man, it's, it's, it's tough. And I think the whole of the the feel good factor that has been around this football club since basically since Ange walked through the door started to wane a little bit. It had it had last season vibes about it. You look on social media, and you know, I know social media shouldn't be a barometer, but let's be honest, it is. Why right? social media? Some of the radio outlets, you know, the news outlets, they're all pointing to, oh, it's going to be a disaster. It's going to be a disaster. Now I've been around a long time, right, and I know that actually, if you keep thinking. It's going to be a disaster. You keep thinking bad things. Guess what? It manifests and that's what happens. So the reality of the situation is we was going to the Wolves game with in, in a difficult moment. And it's only a moment in time, but it was a difficult moment. And then, you know, it, it, it proved to be that. I mean, we were just saying in the green room before Holly, um, you know, Connor and I, when, when you and Russ were, were coming on with short, sorting out tech, technical stuff, it, it was like watching last season. Uh, you know, I, I think outside of the first, I mean, I'm probably being generous, giving it 10 minutes, but I, I might say seven. 
I actually thought I was watching Angel and Stellini ball. I mean, there was nothing about it. Russ has been on uh, on our show time and time and time again talking about players not being good enough for us, right? The Dyers, the Davies, Correct. the Premier. Yeah. And, and, and there, there's no there's no coincidence. Look, I'm not levelling all the blame at them players, but there's no coincidence that we play like that the first time since the Fulham game that we lost on penalties, by the way, that where we've made all them changes and we play like last season, there's no coincidence there. And I, I'm just I'm just disappointed with the fact that I mean I've got a timeline here. I don't want to hog the whole thing. I, I, I will shut up in a minute. But, but at, at one all, well, this is a quick timeline, right? At one all, bit of research here, Holly, for, for your show, for your brilliant show, by the way. 93 minutes and 56 seconds. Dawson stamps on Son's crotch, right? On on right in his in yes, his do. Yeah. Right? It's absolutely ridiculous. We get a free kick in their final third. It takes one minute for Poro to actually take it. So we're now 94 minutes, 58 seconds. Poro takes a free kick, and it was it was a bad free kick, and they go on the break. 95 minutes and 15 seconds. Sorry for the detail, but it's important. La Celso has an outstanding challenge, sliding challenge, and wins the ball back, gets us straight back on the front foot, yeah? And um, we, uh, we get a free kick on the 95th minute and 48 seconds. And bear in mind, that is 12 seconds before the allotted time is finished, right? And um, we, we mess around with it between... I'm sorry to dig them out, but we mess around with, with Emerson Royale, pierre Mill Hoybier, and Eric Dyer at the back. Some sort of little triangle things. Rather than playing it up forward, playing it forward to go and get a goal, and ball, we're messing around with it, right? We give away a silly free kick because it's a rubbish pass. They take that quickly. No one sharp. 96 minutes and 26 seconds. And in 96 minutes and 38 seconds, pierre Emil Hoybier does not track his runner, which is Lamina. Eric Dyer is just literally watch, ball watching to see what's happening. And before we know it, Lamina scored. It's in the back of the net. And that that's cost us not, not only um, that, because obviously he'd already um, conceded to go 1 1. That's cost us the same amount of points as Liverpool and Arsenal. I mean, that defeat has cost us top of the league for the international break. And it was basically three, four minutes worth for the two goals of utter. It was just it was just school school person stuff school person stuff that that we've ended up losing the game and it's just unacceptable. Mm. Holly. So, mm. Sorry for the loss, but that, that is the reality, right? Well, yeah, mm. no, it I, is. Uh, go on. It is, but and here's the big but for me: for the whole of that game, we did not play well. Sonny yes, went missing. Kulosevsky is certainly not as effective as he has been in the past. Ben Davis, incidentally, I thought he was really good in this game. Uh, so, yeah, you I know, and I've been one of his fire. big critics, uh, but I thought he was he was great. But the personnel that we had, um, they just didn't play football. I mean, all these people that we say are not good enough, the squad players are best, you know, a lot of them are out on the pitch. But the thing is, they are training under Ange. They know the way he wants to play football. So why they didn't do it, I don't know. I thought it was easily the worst performance of the season for us. Um, sadly, because of what happened at the end at Lee, it was, you know, a brilliant sort of timeline you gave there. It's the usual eye off the ball, not paying attention, believing that you're going to get the result that you think you deserve, and you don't always get that in football. Wolves are a good team. Their manager is a very good manager, uh, and he's going to do well there. They've got some excellent technical players. We had no speed in that game. We didn't move the ball quick enough. And when we did try and build from the back, we did it and did the crap sideways, nonsense back, sideways. There was none of this quick passing that we saw in so many of the games this season. Quite why, I don't know. But really, you know, did we deserve to get a draw out of the game? Probably. Did we deserve to win? In my opinion, no. Would I have taken it? Yes, of course. Did we deserve to lose? Yes, because of that timeline that Lee just laid out. And I think Holes and everybody, that is the bottom line, underlined massively by the squad players that we haven't been able to get rid of, the ones that some of us feel a little bit sentimental about, Hoiberg, for example, he's had his moments for us. 
but probably at the club, they've run their course. And at the end of the game, I didn't tweet anything about the game on X. I just put, over to you, Daniel. Come on, you Spurs. Because that's where we are. And he spent a lot of money, but he spent an awful lot of that lot of money badly. And, mm. and, and that is the scenario we're in. Hopefully, this new football department that we've heard so much about and the consultancy, of course, from the Italian, who we can't really talk about too much, I mean, hopefully this is going to come good. One thing is for sure, <coughs> excuse me, Ange will not have watched that game and thought to himself, well, yeah, it was just a one-off. I mean, he'll be dissecting it. There'll be people, their cards will be marked. And um, there, there's got to be some changes. There really has. I'm sure we'll talk about it later. But it will happen again and again and again, like it has every season for the last three or four seasons with players who are not good enough for what we're trying to achieve, a lot of them. It's as simple as that. No, definitely, 100%. I mean, both you and, and Lee have, have pretty much hit the nail on the head in the sense that it was those fringe players, to say the least, that have cost us. And I know that um, Russ and Lee have mentioned, obviously, Davies, Connor. And I, I think the fact that he came into the side, and I think there was at times where he put some amazing blocks in, left, right and centre. Again, I just think it's his legs towards the end of the game is what has cost us again. Yeah, like like Russ said, for me, Davis Davis was okay. It sounds crazy saying this. Davis and Dyer up to a, a most of that game did a job. They we got through the game. We we lasted the game not long. You know, we come out of that game with a win. We're saying how we won that game. It, it's the way the game was. But you watch those final minutes, and it was just a calamity of errors. You know, you've got no disrespect. You have got Dyer clearing the ball out, and then you've got from the throw in. No one's closing down Cunha. Right, no one's closing down He Chan. No one's closing down Cunha. Cunha plays the ball in. No, did you know the the technique for Sarabia's goal was unreal. The touch, the finish, fantastic. But they switched off. They that they switched off, and then the second goal. I don't mean to dig out Emerson Royale because he's not a left back. That and again, that alludes to what Russ is saying about depth. We're playing Emerson Royale at left back. Yes, okay. Uh, Perisic is out. Yes, Adoji's out. You know, Sessegnon is Sessegnon is still gone. You know, but do, do you know what I mean? It is. We're, we're having to force Emerson Sessignon, Royale, Sessignon. Emerson, and, and it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. do, do, do you know what I mean? So it's. And I don't want to dig him out, but he he didn't have a great game and it was down his side. And then, yeah, Davis switches off. But and I don't mean to go back to this mentality thing with this club. You know, we, we've said it, you know, through Mourinho period, through Conte period mentality. But it's those same players. That's what it is. That's where the mentality is. It's, it's yeah. I don't want to dig him out. But it's Davis, Dyer, Hoiberg. They aren't, they aren't good enough. If we want to go to the next level... Any team that's up there would not be forcing those players in. You would you would get them out the club and go from there. And I don't mean to say it in a horrible way because they've they've done a service for us, but they're clearly not good enough. And and it's interesting what what Lee was saying as well about the football we're playing. But and and it, it's spot on. You know, it wasn't a great game. The only other chances I can think of are the Johnson chance or you know the Lo Celso shot. That's it. We didn't deserve anything from that game really. So if we had got a point, I'd have come away thinking, wow, fair play, you know. And again, that's because of Wolves, because of O'Neill's done a great job there. They beat City there earlier this season. People are sleeping on him. And that's not to sort of overlook the fact that it was disappointing from us, because it was, because we completely just crumbled. We, 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 did, we did a Spursy, unfortunately. That's exactly what we did. And that is the mentality of some of those players. Isn't it, Connor? Yeah. That, that is, just, just to interrupt you, that is the disappointment, isn't it, Connor? And the fact that, that we we've done we've done exactly what everyone was expecting us to do, and like yeah. literally everyone. The media were loving it. All of our rivals are loving it. You know, and and you know now people are talking about oh Villa, they're coming to town. They've got a woeful away record, by the way. But they're going to yeah. probably rock up at Spurs, and then, you know the, the you know cut, cut Watkins on fire, Douglas Louise, whatever. And all of a sudden, they go above us and we're out of the top four and everyone's loving it. Like, it, it, it literally classic Spurs, isn't it, Connor? It's like classic it's, Spurs. Yeah, it, it's us. But football as well is, is sort of momentum, isn't it? You know, everyone was getting really hyped on us winning all these games. And when we're winning all these games, it is momentum and you keep going with that. You lose the Chelsea game. And like like you say, I was at the I was at the Chelsea game as well. And I'd never, ever, ever seen the fans like that. We'd lost the game by three goals and we're all applauding at full time. We're all chanting at full time. That is the effect that Ange has done for this team. So that's why it hurts more because you're looking at that and you're going, that is Spursy, what's happened there? But it's Spursy because of the personnel on the pitch because we are missing that spine. We are missing Van Der Ven. We're missing Madison. They are the two biggest players I was most scared of us missing. 
and we and and it shows straight away that that he had to change. You know, what I mean, Lo Celso. Yeah. He brought Lo Celso on, but he clearly doesn't trust him. The, the, the well, fact that exactly what why why didn't he play him from the start in a oh. Madison role? Yeah. He's an attacking cam. Like what was it? Cam. cam. So, you know, whatever. He's a yeah. cat, he's a cam, right? So, so why not play? But he played Hoybier in that one. Yeah, yeah. Why? I, I think because he, he, tr- he clearly doesn't Lo trust him. That's the thing with Lacelso. No. For me, he clearly doesn't trust him. I mean, the Fulham game. I was at the Fulham game as well, and, and he was awful. Really? He, he played my and he he was awful. So I think and and this is this is what I'm I, I'm trying to be abundantly clear with with everything that's going on this season you know for me all I want this season is Europe of course I want you know we it'd be great if we won the title we're not going to win the title but I no. just want us to get back into Europe because it's a it's a project it takes time I feel like we've been doing really well but these slip ups are going to happen it's the most important thing now is getting behind the manager getting behind the players knowing that Angie's doing his best job with them and that we're all, I mean, come on. Like like I say, those vibes after that Chelsea game was insane. We'd lost by three goals and we've come yeah, out of that. It was. Game. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to call into question Davinson Sanchez being sold. Yeah. He, you know, I know he's had a lot of stick and he's frustrating, but pace is what he's got. And, um, you know, we, we needed that and we're going to need pace. And, you know, we are in the situation where we've got probably 13, 14 top quality players. Well, you need a bigger, bigger squad than that. You know, we're going to keep going round on, on this subject. Uh, but nobody wants to buy dead wood. Nobody wants to loan dead wood. And, and, and this is the problem. You know, you've got Hugo who had a chance to go back to Nice. He preferred to sit in London and take the money. Paycheck. Take it's a paycheck. And, and Don Bele, put another perfect yes. example. And I, I don't want to think these no, guys no. We can't get rid of him. With no disrespect to Roden. Roden is coming back. To he be playing Cam for us in about three weeks. Honestly, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's insane. And we all go, always go back to the same thing. And I don't want to go back into the same patterns after losing two games because Villa is going to be a very hard game. We know City's going to be a very hard game. But I think. The most important thing across all of this is us to just remember that this Ange project is 12 games into the season. Like He's had that sh- impact in such a short space of time. So we're going to have these slip-ups, but we need to remember that amongst those slip-ups, we're going to have the good vibes that we've had at the, you know, at the home, uh, at home and just everything else. There's a lot to be happy about. But yeah, I'm, I'm fuming because I'm like, it's the same culprits. It's the same yes. players over and over making those mistakes. Yeah, I think, I think that's yeah. I think that's fair. look. If we're, we're a third of the way through the season now, thirty-eight game season, we've played twelve, so 12, 24, 36, basically a third of the way through. If we got the same points total in the next twelve batch, twenty-four matches, or the next twelve games, uh, two two lots of batches, we'd be finishing on what seventy-eight points, guaranteed top three, based on the history of the last 12, 15 years in the Premier League. So you know, and I, and I still think, like 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 Connor and Russ said, Holly, right at the beginning of the show, I'm still positive. I still think that we're doing. I still think that we're there. You've got to go back into that match um, at, at, straight after the international breaks. It's Man City versus Liverpool. Is the first game on a 12 30. So there's two teams there. One of them are going to drop points or they might both drop points if it's a draw. Are we going to turn Villa over um, on, on the Sunday? All of a sudden we're back at the top of the table or one point behind City or whatever, however it's going to work out. So it, 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 there's very much to play for. I just think that we need to, as a fan base as well, because everybody wants this to happen to us, right? You've got to remember that. Everybody wants this to happen to us. So I think as a fan base, we just need to make sure that we're sticking together in, in that, in uh, you know, in these bumps in the road, as you said, Holly, because th- look, there's going to be bumps in the road. I think the frustrating thing is, although Wolves are a good side and they've done well, that is a very, very winnable game. And we were winning the game in the 91st minute of the football match. So, so you know, even though we were absolute turgid, in my opinion, as I said earlier, we were winning the football match, right? So we could have come away and actually rip up the match reports and all the media stories. Because if we'd have won that game, we're sitting top of the league as we talk right now. And it's a completely different show. And we'd have been sitting there going, my word, did we get away with one of them? But we've got away with it and we've won ugly and we've... It's sign of the champions, and you know, and that's at the fine mar- margins, isn't it, uh, Holly? In, in in football, yeah, it really is, and I think that's the thing. I think that's why we're so frustrated in the sense that it took so long to hold on to that lead, and then within a few split moments, 
is gone and all three points have gone. I mean, Russ, I'm going to come to you because obviously we were winning at the start of the game and that was through Brennan Johnson. What what do you make of the impact he's had? Because obviously that was probably his first actual proper full long game that he had because obviously he had to get taken yeah. off against Chelsea. So what do you kind of make of it? Well, I mean, um, North London derby, as we know, he made an appearance um, made an appearance in the Wolves game. We haven't really seen much of him. I, I mean, you know, uh, against Chelsea, uh, he could have done a lot more given the opportunity. I mean, I, I, for me personally, I would have him in that position and Richarlison, who now obviously is undergoing or has undergone surgery. I see that apparently Saudi Arabian clubs are interested in him. Funny that, isn't it? Um, because I don't think he's got a lot left or long left at Spurs. Uh, I give it until the end of January without, you know, living up to the hype and, and the money as much as we've supported him. I think Ange is ruthless enough that he would say, mate, you can go to Saudi Arabia. Now, just imagine if we got 50 million for him, something like that. They could spend that on a proper striker in January, because I think we need a top-class central defender. We need another really good midfielder who can, you know, lead people, get out of a game when things are not going well, exactly like we should have had at Wolves. Uh, and we need a striker. And uh, a couple of other players would be nice, Mr Levy, as well. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, I think he is a terrific addition to the club. I think he's he, he improved so much under Steve Cooper. Uh, Forrest, I think, is an international player. And I think under Ange, already he would have learned a lot. And um, I, I think he's going to serve us very well. Because what I like about him, he's got pace. He can see a pass. And he also runs into the box and gets on the end of them as well. So, you know, there's three reasons why I think we should all go Brennan Johnson. Fabulous. And that was an Ange signing. So there's a clear indication there on the quality of player and matters who we want to bring into the club. The problem is the ones that we can't get rid of and the ones who are comfortable and they don't want to go. And this is all down to contracts, agents, agreements with football clubs. We all know what it is. And it's so difficult to get out of those contracts. So we've seen, we've had a glimpse with Brennan of what Ange wants to bring into the football club in terms of quality, young players, and, um, and we are going to see a lot more of it, I'm absolutely sure. But I personally am very happy with him, I, I think. And the goal, tremendous to get in that position. Wonderful cross from Porro. Uh, you know, he nipped in front of the defender. It's exactly what we want. Because I don't think Sonny would have done that, by the way. I'm not even sure Harry Kane would have done it. So <laughs> well, it hmm. you, you know, although he's doing rather well, isn't he, over there in Germany? 21 goals. Blimey. Hmm. Um but, you know, this is a team, and that's a point, actually, to make holes and the rest of you guys. The, this, this is a team, and Anne said it before the Wolves, Wolves game, the biggest challenge I had was the top striker in the world leaving the club. You know, and the way we've played football over 13 games, 12 in the league, one in the Carabao Cup, um, overall including the Chelsea game, has, has been so good to watch. You know, that old phrase, we've got our Tottenham back. I'm not sure whether I like that, but I know what what people mean. We're, we're, we're playing a different type of football, you know, a, a sort of probing, attacking, fast football that we all want to see. And, you know, that is why the fans after the Chelsea game, what an incredible game, were cheering them because we've been starved of that even though we got tonked on paper 4-1 because of the football that they saw. And, and, and that's where I think the fans want to be. Other clubs don't get it. Other pundits, they don't get it. What on earth is he doing playing a high line with nine men against Chelsea like that? It's suicidal. Well, in 1978, it might have been. But this is 2023. And we've got a manager who believes in his principles and uh, we all believe, and don't let, let a couple of games throw anyone off the scent of Ange Ball, Ange Postacoglu. I mean, these people, they need to have a look at themselves. It'll be gone by January. It'll be down to Levy. He won't be gone by January at all. Ange out. I keep hearing, oh, it's all over social media. 
I don't spend all my life on social media, but I have a look, particularly at Lee's posts, if he's got his kids involved, uh, who are beautiful. And um, I don't see anyone saying, hang out. Maybe I'll follow the wrong people. <laughs> Maybe, but like you say, it's just bizarre. Like you said, it's to have weird. like two games and absolutely derail the season because I don't think that is the case. Again, we know the personnel that were culprits to that loss again. So I think it's bizarre to to see or, or hear any of those uh, whispers. But Connor, obviously, I want to talk about Sonny because it's, again, there's been a lot of talk on social media that he went missing. Uh, against Wolves but it's a weird curse I think it's like 11 well it'll be 12 games now that he hasn't managed to obviously score against Wolves do you think that played in his head or do you think not having Madison he couldn't manage to, to get the ball anywhere um the, the, the not scoring against Wolves one in that many games is very interesting no he's Madison it's without a doubt Madison I, I think we, we've said it before with Sonny you know I mean I know he, he supposedly had that sort of injury last season that he was carrying and he was a bit slower and Conte ball and everything else didn't do him any favours but it's 100% not Madison because you know one thing realistically as well when we were playing last season and and he, he was doing a little bit, you had Kane constantly dropping deep. So when you've got Sonny taking his chances, you've got someone making the chances for him. Now, I don't want to dig him out because it's hard when there's not that creative player creating chances for him. But he was non-existent. And Sonny does that. So Sonny has games where he disappears. I love him. He, he is so special to us in every possible way. But he does go missing and he needs to take credit along along sorry less credit than let's say emerson and davis and dyer but he's got to take credit for for going missing i, I know that he didn't have the creative player in front of him but as captain you want someone to take the game by the scruff of the neck and you never really got that from him you, you know i could sit there and watch that game again and probably count on my hand how many touches i think son had on it like he, he just wasn't in the game at all and, and like i say i know it doesn't help when you haven't got that creative player but as captain, it's your job to change a game, to take it by the scruff of the neck. Or or maybe even Ange. Maybe Ange can look at that and go, well, maybe I need to bring Johnson more central. But Sonny, you know, like ch change the system. So, again, Ange needs to take some credit for it as well. But I think I'm going to revert back to what Lee said again about the system being negative. And that didn't help him either, of course. But you can't play that high line, which is Ange, Ange's principles, with Dyer and Davis. Because if you do, then you are going to leak you know, a lot more goals than you did against Chelsea, you know, so, so, so he had to adjust it for that. But again, you've got to remember, we're in an unprecedented situation. How many, you know, how many games have you ever been to where you've seen your team lose four or five of your of your starting players ever in one game? Like that's Tottenham. That That's us. If there was ever a game that describes Never. our luck, it's, that's Never. it. Cursed. Yeah. Yeah. Cursed. Yeah. 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 Cursed. Cursed. You get the red cards and you get the injuries on top of it. And they're not just injuries. They're injuries to arguably two of your best players that season for a couple mm -hmm. of months. I mean, come on. That's hard. Yeah, then again, crazy. we shot ourselves in the foot by leaving ourselves with Dyron Davis as our centre-backs. I mean, we said so much last summer that we needed another centre-back. Another one. We Phillips. need at least one. We Phillips isn't ready. We need, I think we need two, personally. Yeah. But we, need, we definitely need another one. Yeah. We're talking about centre-backs, right? This geezer behind me, right? You know, I, I don't put a lot of names on people's shirts. Um, for, for the show that I did after the game, I had a doggy shirt over here. And I was also had the Van der Ven shirt over here as well. And it was weird because that was three of the back four that is out. Have a look at have a look at any other team like you just saying, Connor. That they, they can't handle that. Maybe City can, but other than that, no one else can. But this guy, he needs to take some responsibility and step up, right? Because him getting sent off at Chelsea is is, is caused this scenario. Like you know, we can have a go at Dyer all day long, but the reality is, if this bloke don't get sent off, we don't have Dyer in the team. That's the reality. You can't you can't legislate for Van der Ven's uh, um, hamstring. That's you know that's an injury. That's that's fair enough. I just want to go back to a couple of things that you, you mentioned, Connor, in, in your bit as well, around the kind of the, the style of plan adaptation. The thing that I'm so disappointed with is when we played Chelsea with nine men, we were more adventurous. We yes. were more adventurous with nine men and played better against Chelsea with nine men. We created three unbelievable opportunities when we're down to nine men and arguably should have scored. We should have made that at least 2-2. Two -two. It's a different game. And then we go to Wolves with 11 v 11 and we're a shadow of ourselves. And, you know, and Dyer was on the pitch for that nine men situation because he scored an unbelievable volley, which was obviously offside. And by the way, it's unbelievable, wasn't it? So, so you look at that and you think, where has that come from? It felt to me, talking about 
Donny Holly, it felt to me that everybody felt sorry for themselves. That's what it looked like. So I'm not saying they did, but you know, players, uh, you know, you need to have a look at yourself. So if you're feeling sorry for yourself, and it's not quite like, where's the fight in that? Like, I'm not, I'm not having it. He looked like he missed his mates, his, his vice captains, his, his Sonny, his Sonny missed his Madders and he missed his Romero. So, oh, what shall I do now? I love Sonny to pieces and I think he's the best captain for us. But in them scenarios, why don't he go walk about? Why don't he turn around to Brennan and go, Brennan, do you know what? You go down the middle for five minutes, have a little go. Mm. I'm going to go on yeah. the left. Or Kulisevsky, why don't you switch wings? Or Kulu, why don't you drop into a Madison type role? You, you've said in the preseason that you fancy playing as a number 10. You're strong as a knox. You can drop. You've got get that for, um, that ball on your left foot and have a go. Do you see how I'm coming from? Like, there was no movement across. And we know that's not Ange. We know that's not Ange because Ange does not set up and go, you are rigid. No, he doesn't do that. He sets up and says, yes, you've got a structure, but the framework and the structure is there, but you go and play mm. your football. And none of them players on the pitch p- p- come up. Into, and this is the thing with Madison when he's on the pitch. That's exactly what Madison does. And the pressing that Madison does is absolute sick. It is absolutely sick. And we also miss that as well. So we're taking out the creativity in terms of go and play football, you know, like, uh, Harry used to say, go on, we're going to have a go, lads. Go and play your football. Like, that sort of thing. That's what Andrew's doing to him. And none of them was rigid. When did no. Brennan Johnson go to the right-hand side? Not once. When did Kulisewski drift, come inside, take the ball, have a go, drop a shot? Never. When did Son drop deeper like a cane would normally used to do? It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen at all. And that, for me, is why we had seven shots in total and only two on target. He lacked creativity, lacked... We just lacked energy, yeah. and like you said, you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Basuma, I mean, he's been magnificent for us in that game of Wolves. Quite off what we expect, and actually, I think I am going to slightly criticise Ange here. My first criticism ever: um, Hoiberg playing as the uh, uh, midfield man who's going to pull the strings. Why didn't he say, Bent? Have a half. Give me 70 minutes if you can there. Um, I mean, he's probably only got a half in him at the minute, although he's gone off, obviously, with Uruguay on the international break. Fingers crossed for that one. Um, so you, you have to think, why didn't Ange do that? Is there something about Benz's fitness that obviously he knows more about? them? Because to me, it would have been an, a natural thing to put him in there and leave Hoiberg on the bench and play with Saar, Basuma, and with Bent. You know, that would have showed some intent. But uh, but Biss, for a couple of games, has, has been a bit off the mustard. Since Luton, isn't he? Since Luton, know why. to be fair. But Sorry? Biss has been off it since Luton. Basuma's been off it, hasn't he, since Luton? He, yeah, he, he, it's only two he games, sent off minimum. Yeah. Yeah, I think he he's. Li- I mean, it sounds horrible, but I think at this point, Basuma's looking to get suspended because Connor, he's suspended again. I literally do not know what is going through him. I, I, I really right. don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the, the thing is, right, and and this is the, <laughs> this is the question that you ask about us in comparison to other teams. Other teams, you've got sort of competition, right? Someone like Basuma, realistically, he knows every game he's playing. He knows if he's not suspended, if he's not injured, he's be playing every game. He's one of the first players on that pitch. And that's the issue in itself, because like, like Ross and Lee said, if, if Basuma's not at his best, we're not our best, because we're relying on a midfielder who's not playing at his best. And you're spot on with, with Basuma about the suspensions. It's a problem. It is mm. it already a problem. You know, well, Don't like, forget January. He's on his way with Saar. And this so, is what I'm it, I it's mean, there's three so more guys. Yeah, it's just an endless cycle of of not knowing what's going to happen. Because okay, if that's the case, well then maybe we try something else, like you're saying, Bentacur. But then again, with Bentacur, are we taking the risk too much by bringing him in too much? It's it's it it's a mess in that situation again with someone like Lacelso who's not getting it. So I just look at that whole midfield, and I think if we are relying on Basuma and Sar as our midfielders then we need to at least have someone else who can go in and change that. And I know we're saying that Bentacor can be the one to do that, but it's too soon. So then what do we do then? Do we start to bring Skip in and have him as an option? Oh, no. Is Skip good enough? Do you know what I mean? So it's so it's like, that's another issue in itself because who plays in midfield against Villa then? Who, what is the midfield? Is, is it is it Bentacor and Saar? Is Bentacor going to be all right after the international break? Like it's... Oh. 
It'd probably be better for him, to be honest. I mean, look at from a positive point of view. If he gets a couple of games out there with Uruguay and he comes through them okay, that's that's good for him because he's getting his match fitness back. So that's not probably not a bad thing. I, I mean, I will throw some of the youngsters in there as well. I mean, you know, we know Santiago's been absolutely lighting it up under 21s. He's injured at the moment. But Donnelly was on the bench. Uh, he's been lighting it up. He is a Madison player. And, you know, you, you look at um, uh, Susop Bell's been doing very, very well with under-21s as well. Lancashire as well, sco you know, scoring some decent uh, goals. Uh, Phillips and Don, I know Phillips has been part of the first team anyway, but Dorrington as well on the bench. Now, I'm not saying throw these in, right? But just look at the way that timeline that I talked about earlier. It did feel like that we'd lost some legs. And said in his, his pre-match press conference, the trouble is with playing a lot of these players and a lot of minutes. When you see Huibier trying to track back Lamina in the, for the second goal, he just totally loses his man. He can't keep up with him. At some point, you know, Saar, who, who has been almost like, you know, a, a, um, a Kante type player for us in terms of playing two positions at the same time, he's been absolutely sensational, in my opinion, this year. He's only 20 years old, 21 years old. He had an off game as well. Right, so you know, and you know, he was slipping over and not not doing the right thing. So, you, you look at the, the positioning around one didn't trust Lacelso to put him in. What does that do to Lacelso? Because if I'm if I'm Lacelso, I'm sitting, there, I'm, I'm fit now. I have I'll put my injuries behind me. I'm a cam. I'm a you know, I'm a number ten essentially. Um, but you bench me and you played Hoybier there. I'm thinking that well, that's a bit off. And then when I come on, like to be fair to Lacelso, he made an unbelievable challenge, best challenge I've seen anyone make all, all game. And he, uh, he he pulled out an outrageous shot that on another day that and this was in top bins and we go tune it up. So, you know, I'm not saying that he's the, he's the answer, but actually giving him a run of games. And then you look at the youngsters and you're thinking they've, they've got loads of energy. They've been playing better football. Um, they've been playing, sorry, more football than what these other players have been playing. So, does that trump playing more football at twenty under twenty ones level because it's a completely different level to a Premier League? I get that, but could they could they have come on for a 15, 20 minute spell or 10, 15 minute spell just for that energy? Because if you had a, a Donnelly or a Donington or a Phillips chasing back, they're fresh, they're fresh legs. All, all we're doing is asking them to run. We're not asking them to do anything other than just to run. You just see, I'm coming for team. I just yeah. so, so that it, is probably where I would I would make. I do, I do side with you. I do think it, it's a good idea with the young players. But the issue you've got, if, for example, one of those players comes on and makes that mistake that they score from, then then that's that's in their head as well. They're thinking, I've, I've been put in the deep end. Well, not put in the deep end, but I've been given the chance here. And that's the mistake I've made. So the, the perfect comment a minute ago uh, from, I think it was Cheese Room John, about um, them being ready. And for me personally, I, I see it as Ange would know better than anyone. Who's, who's right? Who's 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 ready? And also, I don't need to pinpoint Hoiberg specifically, but I can tell you right now, you could probably find a YouTube compilation of his mistakes in that game. Like there was yeah. that free kick right before the end that we had yeah. just by the box. It's a quick free kick. It's a quick free kick to the player. It's just just outside the box. I'm like, I'm like, you're an experienced player, right? Like, then he went to the ref, didn't he? He went to the ref. Yeah, and just said, yeah. What are they yeah. doing? And this, like, this is this is what I'm trying to do. But this, this goes back to what you said about Basuma, Holly, right? So the problem we've got, because Hoiberg would, would be a backup player for Basuma, let, let's say if, if everything, you know, if everything was going fine, we have Madison, okay? If your backup player is someone who's not good enough, then you have got a problem because Basuma, again, knows he's going to be playing. So if he's getting himself suspended, he's like, oh, it's fine. I'll miss, I'll miss the next game, but I'll be back in the game after that because Hoiberg ain't good enough because Skip ain't good enough. Do you, I mean, I mean, I love Skip. I'm not trying to dig him out, but do, do you see what I mean? So this is this is where mm. it becomes a problem. And I don't want to go back into this constant thing we have, where we, you know, when things go bad, we instantly dig out Daniel Levy and recruitment and this, that, the other. I'm not, I'm not here to do yeah. that. I'm just saying, if we are a team that is serious long term, we yeah. have to be looking at each window. Play that role. Yeah. Team, and we haven't got that at the minute, really. I, I, I think there's another. Uh... Sorry, Lee. Sorry, I was going to say, yeah, Benton Kerr, just to finish off on what Conor was saying there, Benton Kerr played that number six role brilliantly under An Antonio Conte. And yes, he was getting forward, but that's okay. Same as Basuma, right? Basuma drops the shoulder, gets forward in the first few games or whatever. Benton Kerr was, was brilliant at that, on that pivot. And he, he could be the backup to Basuma. And Basuma should be worried because Benton Kerr is bloody good. So, you know, if you flip that around from, from saying oh, it's a skip or Hoybier, actually it could be a Benton Kerr. 
and you know because Benzema is not a number ten, so Benzema is the backup to Saar, or Saar is the backup to Benzema, or Benzema could also be the backup to Basuma. So Basuma should be on his game because Benzema is coming back, and when he's fully fit, he's he's probably the best midfielder we've got in the in the in the, in the team um, outside of Madison. Yeah, I mean, I think there's another aspect to it as well. I think Ange and the coaching staff, if some of these players who are not getting games, they are bench players or just in the squad, if they're knocking down their doors and talking all the time, desperate to play, you know, training the hell out of themselves, just showing something. And I'm thinking of Lacelso there, Argentinian international. I mean, there is no way he shouldn't be in that starting 11 at Wolverhampton Wanderers, really, based on what we know he can do, what his track record says he can do. But there must be something that Ange has just thought, no, mate, uh, you haven't convinced me. It, it, it can it can only be that. He's not injured. He's good to go. You know, and as for Ollie Skip, try as he does, he excelled in the championship. And he'll never excel in the Premier League, I'm afraid, because it's that much higher. As Lee was saying, the standard is is higher. And, you know, I hope he eventually finds a, a really good club that will give him the chances that he needs because he's not going to start much. So, you know, we've got to have this out with the old, in with the new, without wishing to go back once again to the old conundrum of recruitment. Uh, but I think... That ultimately is what we've got to do. And I'm absolutely sure Ange knows it. Ange is going to see that it happens, but it won't happen in January. The summer is going to be the really, really interesting transfer window for us, mm -hmm. I think. I really hope so, because like you say, I, I know we've had two bad games and we're sat here talking about recruitment, but it's not just that. It's the fact of these suspensions. It's the fact of these injuries, yeah. because we all knew in the summer that we were one massive injury away from potentially depleting the back line. And now we've got a suspension and an injury in the back line. So it just kind of adds on to the sense that we do need to, to sort ourselves out a little bit. Um, and I think the thing is, we're not getting ahead of ourselves. I think it's the fact that we've done so well at the start of the season and now we've hit these bumps in the roads. We're just very disappointed. Um, but we kind of knew it was coming at some point. But obviously, talking away from the Wolves game, I do want to bring up the Villa game because that is who we've got next after the international break. And Lee, I'm going to start with you first. And I know we've touched on it a little bit already uh, tonight, but what is your kind of thoughts going into this game uh, against Villa? <laughs> Rick, Rick called it on our, on our show, right? Rick called it the High Line Derby. It was absolutely hilarious. He's like many, he said many people. I'm calling you out, Rick. He said many, many people. He said many people are calling this the High Line Derby. I'm like, who's actually called it that? Um, but he's got a point because we both play High Lines. Look, yeah. I think my view, my view on Villa is that we we need to be able to derail their season. We could do that in two ways, right? First way is beat them in the, in the next game. The second way is we go in for some audacious bid for Watkins. So I think he'd be absolutely perfect for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. I think he's uh, he's 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 got the goals and assists. He's perfect for an Ange uh, uh, system. And I think that you know people, many people will say, well, you know, he's just signed a new contract and he won't go away. Yes, all of that is true, hundred percent. He's going to cost a lot of money. But also, we've just nabbed uh, uh, Lange from there, who, who actually signed Watkins, um, and half of their recruitment team as well. So, you know, I think that there's there's, there's a couple of ways you can derail your kind of rivals for that top four, top three spot, or top five. I think I, I think Villa away from home are, are actually pretty bad. They're not a good side away from home. And I think that we are now in a situation, Tom Hotspur are now in a situation where we we have to win the next game and and I think we will and I think because of that we will do it I, you know the fan base at home and look our fan base away from home are magnificent for all forever forever but um, our, our fan base at home now are also magnificent it is a joy to be at that game um and and I just think that you know he's got a couple of weeks now to really hone what, what we need to do. <laughs> he's not a miracle. Well, maybe he's a miracle worker. I don't know. Maybe he can get his magic wand out or whatever and make uh, make Dyer and Davis a lot better than Hoybear. But I think he's got some time to work with what he's got and really drilling to them. Look, let's put it this way, team. How quickly did Ange Postacoglu turn the whole of the club around? It, you know, he just walked through the door and all that. So if he can do that, that 
he can do that with this group of players and get them to get a result. I think that we need to be on the front foot. We need to be attacking and we need to be playing Angeball. And I think we'll do that at home. And I think that will help us. And it might end up being a, you know, a ding dong game. Look at the Man City Chelsea game. I mean, this is what the league's like this year. I mean, a 4 4. I mean, this is like madness. You know, late goals going in against Liverpool for us and Sheffield United, late goals for Wolves. You know, this, this is the league. This is the Premier League. And I think the way to, the, the way to, uh, you know, to be part of that, to, to, to beat the Premier League, if you like, and, and to be up there challenging is to embrace it and to be part of that. And you can't be sitting back and having turgid football. You need to be going on the front foot. It is Ange Ball. I think we'll do it. And I think we'll do it at home. And we have to do it. See, does that make sense, team? I think all of those yes. things mean that we have to yeah. get a result. But if we have got a good record against us in recent times, which is a bit yeah. of a worry. Uh, used to be the but they are bad. Yeah. Play to Celso. He knows Martinez. Every weakness. There you go. I mean, Valise, get them all on. As many Argentinians as possible. Um, I You've think got the doggy right. back as well. We? Hopefully, yeah, got yeah, the doggy back as well. That gives us a bit more pace in the back line. So Emerson Royal won't be there. Um, you know, we, we've still got that cent centre back pairing uh, partnership as a bit of a conundrum. So we have to see what he does there. But um, yeah. you know, shame that Dyer's not on international duty, so he can't get injured. <laughs> mm, well, yeah, you know, but he st he did score. The winning goal for England in a World Cup penalty shootout for the first time in a long while. So that still carries brownie points with me. Um, yeah, for sure. But, but at Spurs, no, not anymore. I mean, why uh, Why do we give Phillips a go? Mm. You know, we bought him. <laughs> he's He's been brought in and just brought him in. You know, now is the time to start, you know, bringing on some of these younger players as we... We're talking about earlier, but it is an absolute must-win game because even though we are City's bogey team, uh, I don't think we're going to be their bogey team this year. Having said that, I don't think they're playing anywhere near the capability that they have at the moment, City. So, uh, you know, it's a mad, mad league. By the way, nobody has mentioned there was not one VAR uh, stopping no, in, in the Wolves-Spurs uh, game. So we went from the sublime... To the bleeding ridiculous, didn't we? There was nothing, and uh, let's hope there's nothing in the Villa game. Just two or three Spurs goals, and and that'll be it. But I, I've got a feeling, like you have, Lee, there might be a few goals in it. But with the fans, and um, you know, a little bit of a hot poker up the old Jack seat from Ange. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, that's what Australians do. Apparently, um, you know, he'll he'll get them going because. You don't want to lose three in a row, two of them at home, then have to go to City, be faced with a January. Are they going to be fit? You know, the ones who are injured. And you're losing Basuma and Saar and Sonny. Um, you, you really have got to stop the rot. And Villa is the way to do it. A apart from the psychological dent for Villa chasing us down for a, a place in the top four. And I rather likely your idea of uh, Ollie Watkins coming to Spurs, although I look at Brian and Buemo as well at uh, Brentford, who I think is terrific. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And I, I think that's the thing. I think, like you guys have both said already, that this is that hopefully the game's put us back on track, isn't it, Connor? Because, like we said, to, to come back from international break, to, to be able to get three points against Villa at home with the home fans, it, it's got to be a must win, surely. It's a must win, but it's a question of whether it will be. Lee, Lee makes a great point about Villa's away record. But again, as I say, always it, football is momentum. And I think for me, it'll be a we score uh, five, you score six. Well, no, sorry. You score five, <laughs> we score six sort of game. No, I don't, I, I, it feels like it feels like there's going to be goals purely and solely because of, and I don't, I don't want to allude back to the defence, but that, that defence will leak goals. It, it's it's a very same, samey defence as last season that we know leaked loads of goals. Villa are a very good attacking team. So that Villa will score. I think we'll score. I think we really will continue to struggle without Madison. I'm going to be honest. It, it's not ideal, the situation we are in. Like, like Russ said about the Celso, it, it's a tough one. It'd be nice to see him step up, but, and see something, which is the reason why he's not playing. He, if he if he saw that he was a player who's going to play for him, then he would be playing him. There be there would be a reason to play him. So there's clearly a reason why he's not. I I would I'll tell you what I would like to see Kulu deployed in the middle. 
I'd, I'd be I'd be very interested to see that happen. I don't think it will. I think we've still got Gill as an option. That's another one who, who people keep, you know, speculating will thrive under Ange. Well, will it happen? Will we see him? I don't know. I, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. But like I say, the atmosphere at home this season has been immense. It was immense before the Chelsea game. It was immense after the game, Chelsea game. It's like... It's it's different, and like like Russ said about the we've got our Spurs back. I I don't like that either. I think it's I think it's silly, but I think people are right in an aspect of saying we have we have we've got that attacking football back. We've got that belief back, and yeah. you know, this is this thing. It's a massive game with us needing to win it. I'm not too sure we will, but if we don't, yes, we've got City after that. Yes, we've got Newcastle as well. Like it's a, it's a tough couple of games, but I believe anyway. I, I think okay. It's a it's a sort of situation where we could lose to Villa, we could go to City and win. That's just that's just us. That's just the belief that we're in at the minute. So I'm I'm confident, but I don't think we'll win, and that's fine. And for me, it's not problematic if we don't because we are so early in this project with everything having changed so much that um, that I just want us to go at them, and we will because because that's that's Ange ball at home, and I'm excited and nervous, but mainly excited because. Yeah. Even yeah. though we've lost, you know, you know, you know, you know, we were saying about that feeling of like under Ange, we're, we're counting down the days to watch Spurs again. And I know we've lost and we feel rough about losing, but in my head, I'm still like, it's X amount of days till that game. Like, I'm, I'm still excited because that's the effect he's had. And that's why I'm not overly worried, regardless of what happens, because we're going to be fine. We just got to be patient with him and know that it will work out. Hmm. And I think the thing is, as well, know. like we've all kind of said vibes tonight. It, it sounds silly to say, but I think that's the thing that's keeping the fan base all together. We feel like we're actually heading in the right direction this time with a manager that plays the style of football that Tottenham's known to play. And I think that's why everybody's so optimistic, regardless of how results are going to go or how they're going to go. We're all happy about it. And I think that's the, the main thing uh, to remember. Um, and I won't be going to that game and jinxing it because I went to the Chelsea game and look what happened. So yeah. I'm staying away from Tottenham for a little while. Um, well, the... In, the, in that game, just to get your view on it, what, what, how are you feeling about Villa? Um, like it's like everybody said, I think it's going to be a tough game, but I think it's one that we have to win to set us up well. Like Connor said tonight about momentum, it's that it's a poignant game to be able to swing it back round, I think. Um, yeah. and it'd be good to have that international break in the middle just to reset everyone. I know we always laughed about last season being praising the international break was coming, whereas this season we're a bit like, I don't want it, I don't want Angel to end. Whereas this time, I'm actually like, I think everybody just needs to, a reset button. Um, and I think imagine, it has come at the right time. Imagine if this, if this was the this time last year, we'd be getting ready to go to the World Cup. And that would have what was yeah. sorted up right out, wouldn't it? But Madison and BDV would be back fit probably by the time the World Cup would have ended. I mean, you mentioned about uh, Brian Hill. I, I, I actually would give Brian Hill a go on the, on, on the left and I'd put Brennan Johnson in his favourite position on the right because I yeah. agree with Russ. From, from yeah, yeah, I think Brennan going to light it up. I think he's going to be brilliant. Um, and I think, you know, the first 15, 20 minutes where we were, play, we were playing Chelsea off the park, uh, last Monday was down to Brennan Johnson as well. I think he was superb in that first first, and then he got sacrificed, didn't he, for the sending off? But I think you know he, he scored. He got an assist against Palace. He scored obviously against Wolves, and that's from from the left hand side. His uh, preferred position is on the right hand side. If you're going to move Kulusevski into a number ten role, uh, for, into the Madison role, you could maybe put uh, Brennan on the right, Gill on the left, and you know, yeah. and, and that might sort it out. I, I would just like to see a bit of fluidity in game. And that's up to the players. Like I said earlier on the show, if Ange doesn't set them up rigid, this is what I was saying about the whole Conte Stellini situation. They were totally rigid. You must do this. Ange doesn't do that. And that's down to the players for me. They need to be fluid. They need to be moving. They need to be feeling the game. And they just did not do that against Wolves. Hopefully they do that against Villa. Mm, definitely and I think that's the key thing like I said it's actually quite interesting that you said that Lee because I didn't really think of it in that in that kind of sense I was just losing my head um, but you're right in a sense that there was no fluidity and we have seen fluidity throughout the whole of the season so far so it was just bizarre that it didn't happen against Wolves think, but like you say of, Holly, just, just on that like for, think of Madison right he scores against Burnley from cutting in on the left hand side uh, a doggy wins the ball high press a doggy wins the ball feeds it to Madison he comes in from the left hand side Brilliant goal with his right foot, right? That was against Burnley, yeah? Then he pops up against Luton for Van de Ven to score. Where did he come from? He's on the right touchline. He's on the right-hand side of the touchline. 
Do you know what I mean? He does one of his little right. shimmy and, 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 and score. Against Arsenal, he's down the left-hand side, put Saka on his backside almost, didn't he, to get the goal. So he's all over the place. The fluidity with matters. You see where I'm coming from? It just didn't happen on, on, on Wolves. And the players need to understand that. I'm sure they do. They're very intelligent, more intelligent than I am when it comes to football anyway. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, from a, from a point of view, looking at that and saying, yeah, this is what we must do. And, and, and that, that, that must be led by Son. I'm talking about the high line Derby, or Rich talking about the high line Derby on his show, um, on, on our show earlier last week. Son in behind, Brennan Johnson in behind. You know, that, that is massive, a massive weapon for us. So we don't yeah. have to, we shouldn't be worrying about them here. We should be worrying about what we're doing on the, on the, on the front foot, not worrying about Eric Dyer at the back with Watkins. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. I don't want I don't want that matchup, man. It's gonna stress me out so much. But you're right. Hopefully against Villa we, we see obviously a bit more fluidity because that would be lovely. Um but it's been so great tonight to to dissect that Wolves game and more with all three yeah. of you. We'll go around the table and we'll say our goodbyes. So we're gonna start with Connor first. So Connor, thank you again for joining. Where can everybody see you doing your thing? Thanks as always. Honestly, it's always a pleasure. Even when we win, lose, I, I love coming on. It's great to dissect and it's great to meet you, Russ and Lee, as well. Uh, I'm on Instagram as CTs with Clovenia, on Twitter as CTs with Clovenia, TikTok. Um, if you know me, I make silly videos. Uh, I make silly parodies. Some of them are really awful songs that some do well, some don't. Um, a lot of it is just passion about football, you know how it is. Um, so yeah, that's that's where you can find me basically. And I know that are you still close to to three thousand? Are you? Are you, are you I, I'm getting there slowly. I want to get there before slowly. Christmas. That would be yeah, lovely. Get Holly there yes, you will. Keep back in Holly, honestly. <laughs> She's great at what yeah. she does. This is brilliant. She is. Yeah. No, thank you. I appreciate it, Connor. Make sure you go check out Connor's stuff. And also, thank you to Russ as well. Russ, where can everybody find you too? Well, um, Nation Radio uh, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock on the app, DAB, FM, Wales, Scotland, Suffolk, wherever, all over. Nation 80s uh, on the app tomorrow morning doing the breakfast show. So I'll finish at 10. And then I'll go on another one at 10. The, the modern technology <laughs> kids that we've got uh, narrating a lot of audio books on ACX. So if you've written a book and you want someone to narrate it, you'll find me there at <laughs> acx.com. Love it. Thank you, Russ. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Molly. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for asking me. No, and good to see you, Connor and Lee, of course, Mr. McQueen. <laughs> and Lee. Lee. I'm really, I'm really Lee. Would you want anyone else to audio uh, record? <laughs> gonna, I was going to say that you have got that voice. Oh, that is, yeah. I mean, literally, you've you you listened to him all night. It was just perfect. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe the books I do at the moment. I'm doing a book about God. Um, I'm doing a novel, which is a kind of Andy McNabb SAS thing, uh, oh, which nice. is quite a lot, right? And um, I'm just about to finish. You'll love this one, Lee. Um, the uh, it's a book about the psychology of salesmen. Ooh. It's a classic oh, book it. that they've oh, asked me it. to redo. And yes. uh, when I was narrating it, Lee, I was thinking of you. Funny enough, mate, that's superb. I'm going to definitely get be getting that one. For <laughs> I'll sure. put the links up when I've finished them. But it's great. Yeah, I mean, you can do anything. <laughs> love it. I love all that. Here in my little room. <laughs> where I do them, it's mad. I never see anybody else, but anyway, there you go. You <laughs> oh dear, but no, thank you, Russ. And also, Lee, thank you again for joining us tonight. Where can everybody find you too? Yeah, I'm, I'm all over the gaff, mate. I'm on uh, Instagram, Lee.McQueen. I'm on Twitter or X at, at Lee McQueen. You know, I, there's only one Lee McQueen for sure. Um, so uh, you can find me wherever you like on that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm obviously on the last one on Spurs, right? That's that's the show. So uh, for, for us that we do two, three times a week now. Um, <clears throat> with, with all the different guests that we've got with Rick and the, the rest of the team. Um, and a big shout out to the team, actually. We're going up to the Football Content Awards uh, this Thursday up at Anfield. Uh, lots of people say that we have a tough time going to Anfield. Hopefully it won't be the case for us because we want to come home with the trophy for yes. best podcast. So that's what wow. we're, we're, we're looking to do this week Brilliant. on Thursday. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully we will have a good international break. We come back and smash Villa. That's what we all want, in it? Yes, Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Um, but no, thank you all of you guys. Thank you to everybody that's tuned in, that's watched live, that's going to re-watch this or listen to it when I get around to putting it on Spotify, um, if I find the time. Uh, but thank you to everyone tuning in. Holly Talks Plus Live will actually be back next Monday because, uh, again, the fixtures aren't all over the gaff. So you can join in uh, next Monday uh, for then. And until next time, uh, come on, you Spurs. 